YouTube, it is they, and welcome back to my channel if you arrived here from part one of my Otvo Transmission Fun series. Um, in part two today I'm going to talk about the Otvo Transmission and a few things that you need to know before you buy one to swap into your car or if you have an Otvo Transmission in your vehicle and it might not be the one that came in your vehicle, um, a few things that you need to know before you go and order a clutch kit for one. Um, you know, not everyone has the luxury of being able to just like remove their transmission and then like inspect it and figure out what clutch to buy. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and um, some fun information about this lovely transmission that so many people love to hate and I love to love. Um, the first thing is that there are two variations of input shaft style on the O2O transmission. There is a small spline and a large spline. Um, they vary by like two millimeters. I think like one's a 22 millimeter and the other one is a 24 millimeter. Um, obviously this is super important to know if you're going to buy a clutch. <laughs> um, you know, I actually forgot what mine was, um, but you don't have to remove your transmission in order to figure that out. I mean, I actually do have I have my calipers, so I can always like double check my research and like go ahead and measure it. Actually, I can fit it in. I actually could measure it. I was, I was about to say, I can't. Um, no, I totally, I totally could fit that in um, and measure it, but I'm not gonna do that, right? I'm not just gonna remove my transmission to make sure that I buy the right clutch and then wait a week for the transmission, uh, I'm sorry, for the clutch to show up. That's just like so unrealistic. Um, so a small spline and large spline, and actually we can figure this out by the transmission code. And I'm going to put in the description below which transmission codes have which, either a small or a large spline, so that you'll know when you go to order your clutch. Um, another thing is these cups come in different sizes. These come in either 90 millimeter or 100 millimeter cups. This is where the axles bolt to. Um, now, if you already have a transmission and you want to buy a new transmission like I did, <laughs> um, I was in a situation where I was about to take an epic road trip and my transmission was just making a whole bunch of sound. So I ended up trading for this one and it was just sort of sitting on a shop floor, which is why I have no idea where it's originated from. Um, but it didn't really matter to me if I had the right size cups because the other transmission that I had, I could just swap them in a pinch. Um, that being said, I think these are still available for sale, but I'm not sure. The third thing where they differ is actually on the clutch size, um, the actual clutch disc itself. They come in 190. 200 millimeter and 210 millimeter widths. Um, I don't know if you can put a smaller one where a larger one's supposed to be. I mean, obviously it'll fit in there, but that just sounds like a terrible idea. Um, obviously a larger one would not fit. So it's really important to know where this transmission came from, what its code is, so you can figure out what size clutch disc you're supposed to buy. That being said, let's figure out how the heck to decode this transmission and how to order the proper clutch like I just had to do. For starters, a lot of people think that the code inside of the bell housing, um, this part number is the transmission code. That's a mistake I see a lot of people making on the internet. Um, what a bummer that would be to like remove your entire transmission just to find out the code, just so you can order the right stuff. And then, I mean, at that point you've already got like the clutch out and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so let me show you what I mean. Yeah, I'm talking about this part number in there. And it makes a lot of sense, right? Because it starts out with O2O, which is, you know, the first, like that's what this transmission is in O2O. So a lot of people think that is the part number. However, it is not. The part number is actually on the underside of the transmission. And you can totally see it when the transmission is in the vehicle. All you have to do is just underneath and look up at it. Uh, let me show you where it's at. Don't worry, there's no fluid in here, so no worries of spilling anything. Um, right here is where the transmission code is. Actually, let me put this down. Um, 
and then I'll show you. Okay. So there it is. Uh, and like I said before, it's like literally right on the bottom of the transmission. It will be so obvious for you to see, just like peeping your head underneath and taking a look. Um, so mine is a 2H and 09093 is the year, month, and day that this transmission was built. So the ninth day of the ninth month in the third year of that decade. So if I did not know what a 2H came out of, I would say, oh gosh, it's either an 83 or a 93. In this case, the 2H actually was only in one vehicle. It only has one application, and that's the 83 GTI. So I know that this is a short ratio, 83 GTI transmission made in September 9th of 1983. Pretty cool, right? So from there, I'll be able to look up and see what sort of clutch I need. So how am I going to know which clutch to buy now, Faye? You're probably wondering. Well, you can start by checking the links in the description below because I have um, links to websites where you can decode that code so you know what the first two digits actually stand for. And I also have a comprehensive list of small versus large spline based on those two first digits so you can figure out what size shaft you have on your transmission. Now that may be enough for some of us to order a clutch. That is not enough for others of us who are trying to order a clutch that have a really crazy Volkswagen mutant. So in that case, we might need to use our owner's manual um, or our factory service manual. And actually, I've got this Bentley manual, which I think is just freaking awesome. However, every now and then, it just doesn't cover everything that I need. Um, for example, in this case, when I go to the engine and clutch section, I'm trying to figure out do I need a 190 millimeter or a 200 millimeter clutch disc, or maybe even a 210? And actually right here um, on page 50 of the engine and clutch section, it actually tells me what part number of the engine um, uses a 190 or a 200 millimeter, because it's a split halfway through this generation um, of Mark I. Actually, it's not even halfway through, it's like I think um, up until 1980 or something like that. But you can see that the engine um, number CK130178 is the start of the 200 millimeter clutch discs. However, the engine that I have uses a 210 millimeter clutch disc. So what the heck do I do? And what the heck do you do if maybe you don't have this manual? First of all, you should probably buy it. But what if you don't want to spend $80 on this manual? Well, first of all, I recommend it. It's like the best purchase I ever made um, in order to do any work to my car. But um, Actually, what was even more helpful for me in this situation was my Parts Place Inc. catalog, which, rather than $80, is free. So I just went online and requested a catalog, and it came in the mail to me um, not, not too much longer. And uh, they've got this great section on clutches and clutch kits. Not only that, but it also gives you a bunch of information on which year vehicles had what size clutch disc. So actually, um, on page 46, at the very top, it has a whole section on pressure plates and clutch discs, and it actually says, the early cars, all 1980s, use 190 millimeter clutch discs. All cars from 1981 to 1984, except GTI, use 200 millimeter clutch discs. Then Golf, Jetta, Cabriolet, not Passat, from 85 to 99 and a half, and also on the 1983 and 84 GTI and GLI use a 210 millimeter clutch disc. Of course, I double checked this by removing my transmission, removing my clutch disc, and simply measuring it. That yes, it is a 210 millimeter clutch disc. So I went ahead and ordered number SN1462 with the 210 millimeter clutch disc. And then I also went ahead and ordered the bolt and seal kit for, um, for the clutch kit because I always replace all of my bolts and all of my seals. Because I've actually had to do this job three times because of leaking seals 
And I just don't want to take this transmission out again anytime soon. I just want to put it back in my car and be able to drive it. So I'm going to go ahead and reseal it and replace, of course, all those bolts, some of which are torque to yield. Um, yeah. So this kit, by the way, also comes with the alignment tool, um, this guy right here. And um, also what is awesome is this is a sax clutch kit, which I have a hard time finding locally. Um, I've never used any other brand of clutch kit, so I actually can't speak to um, the quality of anything else. I can only speak to the quality of this one, and I've never had any problems with it. And I am like really ridiculously hard on clutches. So um, I don't... I don't ride the clutches, but I do aggressively downshift. I do probably shift a lot more than I need to just because I think it's fun. Um, and I'm sure there are others of you out there who can relate. So I don't know, from personal experience, I happen to really love this clutch kit. So that being said, I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope that you liked it. And I hope that you will join me in part three, part four, and I don't know, maybe part five of my Oto transmission fun series. Um, I'm going to go and install this clutch now and film it. So be looking forward to that one. All right. 